Welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us in tribulation. We begin our worship this day in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 357, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verse 1. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We begin with the intuit, which is Psalm 25. Behold, your King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Behold, your King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Advent is taken from the prophecy of Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Sing, your King comes to you. Righteous and having salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. 
Our epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. St. Paul writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. But in those days, after the tri that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with, with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is here. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crow crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for today's message is taken from our Gospel reading from Mark 13 with an emphasis on these words. Jesus says, But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. This is our text, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Friends, I want to ask you this day, where do you see God in your day-to-day lives? Where do you experience Him? Where do you feel Him moving and working for your good? Now, the most common examples that you might hear in response to this question are usually in things like acts of charity, people showing kindness to one another, perhaps in their children or their grandchildren as they grow and mature, and of course, always, and most importantly, in his church, where the fellowship of believers are active in worship and in lifting each other up. All of these things can be usually summarized in this way. Anywhere that we see good things prosper and evil vanquished, that's where God must be. Correct? Well, if God is perfectly good, then the natural supposition is that he must be where the good, the most good, is being done. However, the season of Advent paints kind of a different picture for us, as the ways in which we expect our God to show himself frequently are turned upside down by the Holy Scriptures. Even today's text, as a prime example, seems somewhat out of place, given that it concerns Jesus' second coming at the very ends of the age, the signs and the wonders which accompany him, the catastrophes which precede him. Far removed from the Christmas cards and the quaint manger scenes, we begin our journey through Advent with Jesus' eschatological teaching to remind us that God is with us for far more than just a festive season. Emmanuel, God with us, shows himself to us in tribulation. Jesus, as you well know from the image of him suffering on the cross, was not above tribulation. Yet we often overlook this particular suffering since it is not something that you or I, thanks be to God, have ever personally experienced. Yet the depths of his tribulation go beyond even Calvary's cross. For in coming to us in our flesh, Jesus didn't simply put on humanity for Good Friday, but for all of our days. Jesus knew intimately and personally the daily struggles which are common to our sinful human condition. The scriptures tell us that the Christ knew what it was to hunger and thirst, to grow weary and faint, and yes, even to bleed and to die. In short, there is absolutely no part of our tribulation which he himself did not experience and endure. And so, when we in the church attach the name Emmanuel to our God, we don't simply mean that he was with us just on Christmas morning or Good Friday. We don't just mean that he is with us wherever we feel his goodness and joy or wherever we can readily see him at work. For God is not some fair-weathered friend who flies off at the first sign of trouble. No. Indeed, our God makes himself known to us where and when we see the most trouble. Ours is a God who descends from his throne and comes down to be with us in the midst of our trouble. Christ our Lord says in the 16th chapter of St. John's account of the Gospel, In this world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That is to say that the Christ entered into tribulation for your sake. He came for the express purpose of suffering for you to overcome all the wages of your sin. God who is perfect in power, perfect in righteousness, perfect in glory, he does not suffer the same futility as man. For nothing that he does is ever futile. 
Therefore, God does not grow weary or faint. God does not become hungry or thirsty. And certainly, God cannot and does not die. That's what we would expect. But what does it say about you then, dear Christians, that your God, your perfect God, would enter into an imperfect world to wear your imperfect flesh? The same God who does not grow weary or faint, hungry or tired, suffer or die, he would do all of these things. What does it say when for your sake he occupied this temporal place and he understood what it meant to grow old, to grow ill, to grow tired, to have achy joints, sore feet, headaches, and the common cold, all of these things which we would consider so far away from God's person. He endured them all for you. He also came to be despised and rejected, to be bruised, beaten, and killed for you. All of these things, all of these seemingly futile works and sufferings of man, he took on willingly, for your sake. Such is the infinite mercy of Emmanuel that he would gladly and willingly suffer all of this and so much more just to be with you, his creation. So when we come to Mark chapter 13, and when we begin our Advent tide by talking about these world-ending calamities, We do so with the understanding that when we are made to march headlong into suffering and tribulation of all kinds, there too goes Christ Jesus, our Lord. Despite how we in our futility want to read this text, we know that Jesus is not just standing at the finish line of our suffering, cheering us on to limp our way to his salvation. No. Though we hear today that Christ will come again bodily on the last day, this in no way diminishes his real presence with us here on this day. Just consider for a moment the myriad ways that Jesus makes himself known to you now, in this time, in this place. When you are sick, Christ is present in his creation with the gifts of science and medicine to help you and to aid you in your convalescence. When you are isolated, when you feel lonely or disparaging, Christ is present in your family and friends, your brothers and sisters in the church to give you his consolation. When you are homeless and hungry, Christ is present in charity and in acts of service to provide for your needs of your body, both through secular and religious organizations. When you are at life's end, At that time, when you feel the full weight of your sin and your futility upon you, Christ is ever-present with his means of grace, with the word and sacraments which reveal to you the depths of his love, a love so profound that he would willingly suffer tribulation in order to reconcile you with your God. All of these things, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, show us that ours is not a God who makes himself known by easy or pleasant works. Ours is a God who comes to us bodily, in our suffering, to bear our burdens and to give us his peace. Just as Jesus came once in our flesh to suffer for our sake, so now he comes through his arm, the church, to visit us in our affliction and to give us his gifts. So also will he enter again in the midst of our turmoil on the last day. But on that day it will be different. For he will not enter into tribulation to suffer as a lamb led to slaughter, but he will enter into tribulation as a mighty king, riding to do battle and to end our suffering once and for all. Emmanuel in tribulation shall announce his victory to all the world at his return, a moment so great and so glorious that we cannot help but desire its hastening, for we are eager for our tribulation to be over. However, when we do this, 
we, when we focus too heavily on the future, on what is to come, it can be very easy to forget the grace of our God in the here and now. The plan and the purpose that he has for us and for all of creation, not just on the last day, but on this day. The season of Advent, whose first Sunday we celebrate today, is a prime example of this. Look at all of the holiday season toys and tinsel that you see paraded before you, and you might be excused for forgetting that Advent is meant to be a quiet and penitential season, a time which is designed to prepare us to receive the Lord in quietness and humility. We get so wrapped up in the celebration of Christmas, the gatherings, the music, the gifts, that we ignore the gifts that God gives to us in his church in this season. We might not think of repentance and quiet as gifts because, frankly, to many people, they might sound uncomfortable or even sort of unappealing. However, think back to what we just meditated on about our God how he shows himself to us, and where he makes his presence known. Not always in the pleasant and the lovely things, not only in the great festive celebration of Christmas, rather our God is with us in the somber reflection, in humble repentance, in the confession of sins and in the pronouncement of his absolution. God comes to us this day in our lowly estate with his good and gracious gifts. And so, this season of Advent, as we anticipate the coming again of our Lord Jesus, and as we ponder our own loneliness, lowliness, and need, may we find consolation in his real presence this day. For Emmanuel comes in tribulation, bearing reprieve for the weary and hope for the oppressed. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in this same Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Together, we make confession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, our Father, we give you thanks that you bring us once again into a new church year, whereby we confess and proclaim your great love for the world, in, sending, in the sending of your only begotten Son, as the child of the Virgin Mary, the Lamb proclaimed by John the Baptist, the teacher of the holy apostles, the sacrifice for the sins of all the world on the cross, and the risen Savior of all, who will come again in glory on the last day. Lord, keep us in the confession and faith, and bless its proclamation throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Supply your whole church on earth with faithful pastors and laborers who will continually feed your people and lead your people, rightly pro proclaim your word, administer your holy sacraments, and care for all in their charge. Guard and bless your servant Matthew, our synod president, and Daniel, our district president. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may live in peace and safety, we ask you to continually bless those in the authority of government, the President and Congress of the United States, the Governor and Legislature of this state, and all those who make, administer, and judge our laws. Grant that they rule according to your good pleasure and by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort, O Lord, all who are in trouble, danger, or illness this day. Most especially do we lift up before you Jerry and Jean Albers, Jean Antilla, 
Pat Ballou, Sybil Cole, Linda Gantz, Riley Kirkey, Nancy Seitz, Ed Shaw, Wilma Wampler, Don Weaver, Louise Wolofka, Joe Ziegler, Tom Zimmerman, Wanda Bullhorst, Tim Crouch, Reverend Jeff Geisler, Ursula Hassan, the mother of Sharin Gilbert Hassan, and Dave Beck, father of Pastor Beck. Grant healing, peace, and courage for all bearing their crosses to, to your praise and honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, came down to us at Christmas and now comes to us by your Spirit and your Word, we pray for his final coming to deliver us all in the great day of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.